Did you know that there is something that you can eat every time after meals or after dinner, after lunch? And it could be that little dessert that instead of being something that you need to be worried about, it could be something very useful for your health. Yeah, and this is chocolate, but not any chocolate, not the milk chocolate that's full of nasty ingredients and full of uh, milk and full of uh, sugar and full of other things. No, chocolate that it's made with minimal amount of processes and that it's almost, that it's minimum 70% cacao or more. When it has more cacao, it's gonna be better for your health. And we're gonna dive deeper, seeing what are the health benefits of, of chocolate or of cacao? What are the things that you can find inside cacao that really makes it a very, very good decision for your health? What are the myths around cacao and what are the complications or what when should you be wary, worried about the consumption of cacao? So let's get started. So to start the benefits of cacao, it's because it's a very rich source of antioxidants and attached to those antioxidants, we're gonna see most of the health benefits, but not only because of the, of the antioxidants, but also because of the fat content that it's in cacao. We're gonna dive deeper into the types of antioxidants and we're gonna dive deeper into the types of fats and why it's very interesting for your health. So to get started, we need to remember that cacao, it's mostly when, when you see the macronutrient content, most of the content, it's gonna be coming from healthy fats. Healthy fats are, good, are, are very interesting for our health and we know now that we need to be consuming at least 30% of the macronutrient content coming in our diet should be healthy fats. So let's go and remember what are the health benefits of cacao. The number one is going to be for heart health. And we can remember that because a couple of years ago, the Cosmos study showed us the benefits, the great benefits that cacao has on heart health, especially because of the antioxidants and also because of the content of healthy fats. The next benefit is gonna be the benefits on mental health and brain health. Mental health is gonna be very interesting because of the content of phenylethylamine and of the content of serotonin. Both of them, it has precursors for both of them and both of, both of them are very important for mental health and for all the states of awareness, of being calm, of being chill, of feeling love, because serotonin, that's what it does. It's a very, very interesting neurotransmitter. But for brain health, it's gonna be also very interesting. The fat content is gonna help the brain, but also the antioxidants are gonna help the brain to reduce the amount of free radicals and to bring that redox balance that we really need in every single part of our body. So it's gonna help for the neuron per se, but it's gonna also help for the circulation. So the other health benefit that has been shown with cacao is the benefit for lowering the risk of a stroke. The next benefit is to reduce inflammation. Healthy fats and antioxidants are one of the best things that we can do to reduce inflammation. People always think and always go for, I don't know, turmeric or ginger or things that are sh have been shown just by the benefits directly to inflammation. Sometimes we don't stop and think why or which is the path in which inflammation is getting lowered and not triggered. And most of the of that part is by the control of the free radicals that produce inflammation. So when we control this, inflammation starts to lower. We don't need to be taking an anti-inflammatory drug as an ibuprofen. If you haven't seen our video on ibuprofen, I encourage you to see it. The next benefit is for longevity and the benefit is an anti-aging or something for their skin. And we need to remember that the skin is one of the organs that receive most stimuli to get free radicals. And we, when we get a lot of free radicals in our skin, our skin starts aging faster. When I have a good consumption of healthy fats that are necessary for vitamins, that are necessary for a lot of compounds for the skin. And when I ingest good amounts of antioxidants, it's going to bring balance to the amount of free radicals we're going to have redox balance. And again, once and again with every single organ but the skin where you can see really the benefits of ingesting good amounts of antioxidants. And the next two benefits that I'm going to talk to you is one, the control of appetite is going to help for insulin sensitivity. And this is going to be very, very beneficial for weight control, for glucose control, for insulin control, and that's going to aim for controlling prediabetes, for being diabetic, 
for weight gain, for hypertension, for fatty liver, for high triglycerides, and every other thing that is attached to those problems that come at the beginning with insulin resistance and for the problem of wanting to eat all the time. Healthy fats control appetite, not, not by the way in, when you ingest popcorn that you're full in your stomach because of gastric distension. No, it's by the hormonal control. When you control insulin, when you control leptin, when you control ghrelin, when you control neuropeptide Y and every other hormone that it's involved in the control of appetite, everything is going to be under control. But people, sometimes they feel afraid by ingesting cacao because they think that it has some maybe downsides and people think, and we're going to talk about the myths. So people think that cacao produces acne. No, it doesn't. If you consume milk chocolate, which is full of processed milk, full of sugar, full of flavors, full of colorants, full of a bunch of things that we don't need to be consuming, then you can get acne. Sometimes they mix it even with canola oil, sunflower oil, because they take away the good and healthy fats and they introduce something cheaper that doesn't look like cacao, but it tastes like cacao. It looks like cacao, but it's not chocolate at all. Number two is that chocolate Mm, Doc, I don't consume that because I've heard that it, it can be addictive. No, it's not going to be addictive at all. It doesn't have any compound, although it has some caffeine, it, it's not going to cause any addiction by itself. You can, in, if, if you consume little amounts and if it has no sugar at all, it's not going to be addictive. If it's very high in sugar, then you don't have a problem with cacao. You have a problem with sugar. The other thing is, dog, I don't consume that because I've heard that it has some fat and I'm afraid of weight gain. You should not be afraid of weight gain. When you consume healthy fats, you control better your metabolism, you control better insulin, you control better glucose, you control better your appetite, you control better inflammation, you control better a lot of parameters that induce people to want to eat more, to gain weight, to be inflamed and other different things. So you not you should not be afraid of consuming good types of cacao. The other one that I just mentioned before is that people sometimes they are afraid because they think that cacao has very large amounts of caffeine. And it does, it has. If you're sensitive, well, you need to know this because it could cause you any symptom of caffeine sensitivity. But if you don't have, the amounts of caffeine inside cacao are very low and the possibility that it's going to bring you like an overdose of caffeine is going to be very, very low. A myth that it's not just a myth, but it's a fact, but it's a myth that people talk and sometimes they don't know if it's true or not, is that cacao is toxic for cats and for dogs. And this is 100% true. If your dog ingests, eats cacao, a tiny bit of the chocolate that you were eating, please go and check with your veterinarian because the, the dog may have a complication due to the ingestion of cacao because cacao has a very specific type of antioxidant that's called theobramine and it might cause toxicity in dogs and it builds up very, very quickly. So now let's go deeper into the nutrients inside of cacao. The fats inside cacao are very, very interesting. And this, there is something that I want to bring your attention on. And it's that most of the fat content on cacao are saturated fats. And everyone is afraid nowadays with saturated fats because people think that it raises cholesterol and you're going to get a stroke because of this. And it is not like that. Saturated fats might increase the amount of LDL. We need to remember that LDL, it's a protein that transports cholesterol. Cholesterol, it's not bad by itself. When we get these proteins that transport cholesterol, when they get inflamed, when they get a lot of free radicals, when they transform into little particles of LDL, and when you have chronic inflammation in your body, then you get a risk. So having said this, we need to remember again that the best part of chocolate is the saturated fats when we're talking about the fats. The most important fat inside of chocolate is going to be stearic acid. Stearic acid, again, it's a type of saturated fat, but it has something that it's very interesting. And is that stearic acid doesn't 
cause any increase in the amount of LDL. So it doesn't cause any increase in the amount of cholesterol. If you don't have any more cholesterol, that you don't need to make more proteins to transport that cholesterol. But what's interesting is that the stearic acid turns into oleic acid. Oleic acid is a type of monounsaturated fat. So the second more important fat inside of chocolate, inside of cacao, it's oleic acid. Oleic acid is the one that you find in avocados and the one that you find in olive oil. So we need to remember that stearic acid converts into oleic acid most of the time. But the third type of fatty acid that we find in cacao it's palmitic acid. In palmitic acid, it's again another type of saturated fat. It can raise a little bit cholesterol, but it's not going to give you inflammatory type of LDL, which is the small particle of LDL. It's going to give you the one that is quite bigger. Okay, so let's go with the antioxidants that we find in cacao, because again, not all the health benefits come from the healthy fats. So the first one is flavonoids, and the ones that we're gonna find in cacao are going to be especially epicatechin, different types of other catechins and procyanidins, but epicatechin is probably the most interesting one, and we're going to find one that is called epicatechin Galate. Epicatechin galate or epigalactocatechin, which is the, uh, pretty much the same. Epicatechin galate is the type that we find also in green tea. So everyone thinks that epicatechin galate is only in green tea and it's the one that we are looking for in green tea for all the benefits. Well, in cacao, we find it as well. The other one is that I, that I mentioned it before, it's theobramine. Theobramine, it's a very impor important and very in a very high content uh, antioxidant inside of cacao. And the other two is other different types of polyphenols. Polyphenols as the ones that we find in grapes, the one that we find in blueberries, the one that we find in strawberries, different types of polyphenols. And one of them is resveratrol. So we think that resveratrol is only occurring in grapes and in wine and in blueberries, but no, you can also find different polyphenols such as resveratrol, you can find it inside of cacao. So please consume good types of cacao with no guilt at all. When you do it, you're making good decisions for your health. And remember that that's the very, very and only purpose of this channel. So you can learn to be the owner of your health. And before you leave, please remember to share this video with your friends and your contacts. And also remember to hit the like button if you haven't done so. And also to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. So every time that we make new videos, you're going to be the first one to be notified. Thank you and till next time.